Hey, it's Shilpa Moraska here and I had a very interesting question from one of our members this week and the question was what would I do if I was starting my practice all over again you know what would I do where would I start and it seems quite hypothetical to many but for me it's actually not because I started over from scratch five times in the first seven years of my practice three times within India and twice when I moved countries. And every time I moved, I had no family, no friends, and no patients. I just did not know anyone. And then finally, when I moved to Australia, it was like a complete new world and a complete new culture. I was not even sure if homeopathy was an option for me, leave alone my medical degree. And so having built my successful practice from scratch, so many times over the years, I know exactly what worked and I know exactly what did not. So it's quite clear what I would do if I happen to you know, take a break or have to start all over again in a complete new place. And you know what? The first thing I would do is I would start sharing and publishing my knowledge and my experience. You know, just this being able to so you need to start sharing your unique concept of holistic health and healing when it comes to experiences with your healing modality it could be homeopathy it could be something else but that is the core of the business that we are in that i am in that many of my members and my students are in so really no matter what modality you work with you just need to start sharing now, where and how you start sharing this information or sharing your gifts will be different for different people and will be different for the place you are in. You know, there are some people who are very hands-on and they would want to share. Sharing this is actually helping people and they want to straight away go hands-on working with people. And so most of them would actually be more comfortable if they start seeing patients right from day one. Now in India, what I would do is I would go and volunteer to work at local charitable clinics, no matter where I went, because you see, these were the places where patients came in, no matter what. So I used to go on and help and start working with people right away. I organized and conducted free weekend clinics at my local school. So this was all free for parents and children who, who, wanted, who wanted to get to know how, what homeopathy can do for them. When I worked in smaller rural towns, I joined primary health, you know, rural camps and I worked, I started working with farmers. Now in Sydney, it was a bit different. There were no charitable clinics, but what I did was I offered to work with other practitioners who had a busy practice. I offered my gifts of homeopathic expertise to help their patients because they already had some patients and that's how we collaborated. Now, you could be someone who are more comfortable talking about it and teaching about homeopathy. So that's the way you go. You could join a local community college. You could run your own classes. People run their own first aid classes, but that's not necessarily the way you want to go. You could just go and start talking about um, what homeopathy can do. I was so much passionate about training other practitioners rather than lay people. So what I did was I joined a local natural therapy college. I went and offered to work at students clinic and share my expertise and supervise students who were budding naturopaths and homeopaths and I, I loved it. I was in my element sharing my knowledge and my experience. And then you don't even have to do it face to face. You know, some of you might be more comfortable writing so you can publish articles, you can start writing your own blogs, you know. When I came to Sydney, I, I went and got in touch with people and there was a parenting magazine I regularly contributed to uh, on homeopathy and health and well-being. Some of you might be more comfortable on video, so you can start publishing your own YouTube videos. If you're more social and you're not into big long blogs, then you can just share your thoughts through some LinkedIn article or you can write your own Twitter posts. So you see, what I would do is I would start sharing and I would start sharing regularly. Now this is the key. There are lots of people who share, 
But the one key lesson I've learned over the years is regular sharing. You need to do it consistently. Whether you give your time for a volunteer clinic or you're writing a blog, you just need to be very, very consistent. And this is the real critical piece. You know, when I volunteered for a charity clinic, over time, my practice, my private clinic got busier, but I did not ever stop going there because they expected me to turn up consistently. And that was my promise to them, no matter how busy my life got. You know, with my blogs today, there are thousands of practitioners who look forward to it. It's a promise I make to myself and to them to share my stories and share my experiences so they can grow. And yes, you'll be very uncomfortable at the start, you know, when I was starting at a new charity clinic in a new place or when I was writing my first blog or when I, you know, when I was writing for the magazine article, it was a hugely uncomfortable place to be in. But the beautiful thing is when you're starting over, you do not have to have, you do not have a very big audience, right? No one knows you, no one is paying attention to you. And for example, right now, if I have a really horrible blog or video, there are lots of people who are going to watch me. But when I was starting over, I could put something out there which could be horrible, but it did not matter because very few people were watching. So that was the beauty because you can make mistakes. You can start to learn, you can get better and better. And slowly you start to attract people who, who want who like what you do, who, who know and appreciate your gifts, and that's exactly what you're looking for. So the absolute first thing that I would do is get out there and start sharing. The second thing I would do is I would exactly at the same time go in and start my private practice. Now, I know there are many people who are hesitant to make that jump and start practicing privately right away. And, you know, even if you're sharing and you're teaching and you're looking after patients or you're working for charity, if you're writing for magazines, you cannot actually offer the full potential of your homeopathy unless you work with people one on one. It is the biggest impact you will ever have on your on people through your homeopathy, no matter what, because, you know, when I was working in charity clinics, I simply had no time for deeper concerts. I had to focus on the chief complaint. We were really short on time, you know, five, 10 minutes prescriptions. I was not satisfied. You know, they were based on quick therapeutics. I was learning new approaches. I was learning keynote prescriptions. I was learning the burning housing approach. But you see, there were patients who needed deeper work and I needed to provide the time to do that. That was my satisfaction of homeopathy, which I you would call stage three and four today, right? So it does not matter how many people you go and um, teach or you go and consult in acute clinics, you need to have your own space, your own private clinics, where you can see you have the complete control to work at a stage that you want. You have the freedom to choose people that you want to look after. And the best part were they became my ideal clients. So, you know, right at the foundation, you are having a space for people who are your dream clients. And that is the foundation of your dream practice. So that is the second thing I would do is to have my own private clinic. The third thing I would do is I would go and figure out who were the most successful practitioners in my niche. And I would start to learn their tools and approaches. Now I'll not go very deep into this because I know I have a lot of videos and blogs and books on this, on why your one favorite approach in homeopathy will not always work for you and why you need to grow and learn other new methods and other sort of tools across the entire spectrum of homeopathy. But take it from me, growing your toolkit is the biggest ROI, the biggest impact you will have on your patients. No matter what, how successful your one approach is for you, you know, how well you use it and how well you love it, that one approach will not be the tool for every patient you have in your clinic. And 
if you want to build up a successful practice over over a huge spectrum of people you need to build your toolkit across the huge spectrum of homeopathy so what i would do is i would look for practitioners that had a highly busy practice with decades of real on the ground clinical experience in that niche and i would then get to know what are the tools they use what are the way they approach their patient I would go and join their seminars. I would go and join their courses. I would go and study what they're sharing, what they're publishing. You know, today with social media, with blogs, with forums, you know, you can do that quite easily. You can go and learn what they do. Um, you know, study what approaches they use and what type of practice they have built. And eventually, I would make a list of people that resonated with me, and I would request them to be my mentor. So you want to create that connection and relationship with them so you can be able to get their help in your own clinical situations. And you know, there, there could be some practitioners who do not take any students or mentor mentees and do not have the time to offer any mentoring. Then what I would do is I would go and build value for them. And when there are lots and lots of different ways you can connect with um, amazing practitioners and learn from them, you can find ways that you know, things that they are interested in and you can go and offer to help them and support their cause. And you want to build value for them and believe me, you will gain invaluable wisdom um, and enrich your homeopathy from their association. Just find ways to be helpful for them. I'll give you some examples. Like in India, I would go and volunteer and assist some of my most favorite experienced teachers a few hours every week, you know. Some had extremely busy practices and decades of experience, but they never had time to teach. So I realized they needed help to share their patient load. So I offered to take time and took the bulk of their case taking, you know, the initial case taking, so they can just fine tune. For others, they were busy traveling or they were, you know, I offered to transcribe their video cases. I offered to look after their patients when they were away on seminars. And then eventually, they connected with me because I was offering to help them and looking after their patients and they helped me in my challenging cases. There were others who were into research. So I went and helped them collect their research material for their papers, for their books. And you see, it was such a joy and it was such a highly rewarding experience because in turn, I gained a lot professionally and personally. It was through these ventures that I learned firsthand the new tools and approaches right from conception. I learned everyday patient management. I learned hands-on experiences. You know, I got to know what works for them and what does not. So I could leverage it in my practice. It was all about being open and not be stuck in one particular way. I, it was about being open that something else is working and just let's just look at what it is that's working for them and not to mention the ample opportunities to collaborate with them in so many different ways and so many different fronts. And I think that is what you need to just get out of your box and just venture out and just imbibe and be a sponge and soak in new things and new frontiers. So that's the third thing I would do. And it doesn't matter if it's homeopathy, even a new modality I learned to, tomorrow, this is exactly what I would do. The fourth thing, that I would do is I would get out of my clinic and I would join a network of really passionate, like-minded practitioners. Now that is where you really make the connections. So find a group and there could be no excuses. You know, where you find a group where you share without fear of judgment or prejudice, where you can share your personal ups and downs and where you can be who you are. So the local networking groups that I built in every town that I went to had been my lifeline. So I was never an isolated practitioner working just with me and my patients because I was going out and connecting with other practitioners who were at the, in the same boat as me, right? And this was the real reason I built my online uh, forum, my Quest Connect for new practitioners who are starting out as well as advanced practitioners where they can come and share their knowledge and wisdom, but at the same time get help 
and step out to help others. And that is the connection which I'm so proud of, which has been built in the Quest Connect community. So that is such a critical part of your success as well. All these four things together are critical, no matter where you are. So the meta learning on what I'm talking about today is that you build your impact across a large network of people through your unique healing gifts. And you can do that by sharing, by publishing, by teaching, by volunteering, by working one-on-one -on -one at your private clinic. So you're going out there and helping and transforming people. But then you have to go and connect with incredible mentors and teachers who have worked hard and built their successful practice practices. And when you connect with them and you can learn from them and brainstorm with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis, that is 100 times better than learning from a passive book or you know, thousands of books. So that's how I would start all over again. If I have to start, I'll share my you know gifts and my um, publish and get out and flow with my gifts. At the same time, I'll develop and grow based on what I learned from these incredible people. So that's how I would start all over again if I have to start in a completely new field or modality. And I have done this throughout my career. I've changed places across different countries, continents, in complete new places, having a complete new presence and a new life. And I did exactly what I told you. I started sharing and publishing and I built a patient base. And then I would get in touch with some great mentors along the way and enriched my homeopathy. And that's how I would go into a new business, a new homeopathy practice, or even a new healing modality, or a new, new way of, you know, a new business. So if you're watching this anywhere beside my blog, I would encourage you to head to my site, shilpabharaskara.com, because that's where the action is, and that's where all the resources are, and that's where lots of gifts for you to take away. So let me know what you think about my four steps. Give me a thumbs up. A thumbs down doesn't matter but just you know give me a reaction scroll down leave a comment let me know what you think